Hey everybody, Zeno here, and welcome to the first video on the channel of 2022. And that's really exciting. I'm really excited about this year, as we'll get into here in a minute, because this is a predictions video. We are going to predict Nintendo in 2022 as we did the past two years, which as we know from experience is really hard. It's like catching lightning in a bottle. These people, the company Nintendo, never do what you expect. So it's always fun to try and predict what you can't expect. So join me as we go month by month predicting Nintendo reveals and release dates and uh, just what this year might look like. What excitement will we find? So as is customary with this 12 month year that we have for ourselves, January is the first in line. That is the first month. And what is happening this month? Well, most of it's already happened. I usually have a slow start up at the beginning of the year, getting the best of 2021, uh, or you know, just the previous year video out. So we know that there was a Kirby trailer, and we know that Pokemon is coming out, I believe on the 28th, which is exciting. It's a new concept for Pokemon. It could be great, it could be terrible, we're gonna have to see, but that's really January. We know what's happening because most of it has already happened. Well, except for one thing, because hi everybody, it's uh, Future Zeno cutting in here to tell you about the Microsoft acquisition of Activision. I know that's not even a Nintendo related thing, but to say, oh, we know what's happening in January and everything and not acknowledge this, I just felt would be kind of stupid. If you care about games in any way whatsoever, this is huge. This is huge news. First of all, it is the biggest acquisition of a gaming company ever by like a long shot. 70 billion dollars. Most other ones don't top 10 billion. This is like a Nintendo level purchase. Nintendo's market value, I believe right now, is in the like 50 million, uh, 50 billions. And Activision Blizzard was just bought for 70. That kind of puts the numbers into perspective. Second of all, what is this going to mean for Activision as a company? Because if you did not hear last year, they were in the news a lot because they had a lot of issues with harassment and I am not going to get into all of that right now because it's not good. It is very much not good and Activision really needs a change so maybe Microsoft is this change that they need but then again also are the people that are responsible for all these horrible things happening at the company just gonna jump ship and be completely fine they probably would have done that even if Microsoft didn't buy them so I don't know maybe this is the best case scenario but there is just a whole lot to dissect here and I know this is a Nintendo predictions video so I'm gonna leave it there and just say that's insane that opens the door to Microsoft even being able to buy Nintendo at some point maybe someday it's it's basically the same amount of money I know they tried to back in the day they failed they were laughed at but what if what if someday we see it maybe not because monopolies and everything and how much more can microsoft buy before they start to infringe on antitrust laws but i just thought that was way too big of a thing to leave out of this video so that's what future xeno had to say back to past xeno just living oblivious as to what is about to happen and just making some fun nintendo predictions take it away past xeno but then going on to february we really don't know what is going to happen this month yet because nintendo has no games scheduled to come out this month a lot of other companies like uh, Horizon Forbidden West from PlayStation and Elden Ring from From Software, big releases from them, but nothing from Nintendo. A lot of people seem keen to say though that this might be our Nintendo Direct month as it was last year when we got a February Direct with Splatoon 3 and Skyward Sword HD and Pirate and Smash and a lot of other stuff I can't think of right now, but that seems to be the common consensus among a lot of people and uh, I am actually a part of that common consensus, I do think we're going to get a direct in February, and uh, I do think that we're actually going to have three directs again this year, all in the exact same months, which we'll get to when we get to them. But I'm going to go out and have a very specific prediction that the Nintendo Direct will be on February 16th. Don't ask me why it's that specific, it just is. Okay, so we have a direct, but like, what's gonna be in the direct, Zeno? That's what we care about, that's what the people want to hear. Tell the people what they want to hear. And I will. I believe that in this direct, we're going to get a whole lot of stuff because something else is going to happen later this year that's kind of just going to push everything to the side, and Nintendo's going to have trouble talking about any other games. So they're going to premiere a whole lot of games right here. First off, bang, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 announcement. It is real. We're not crazy. We didn't do that hour long discussion for nothing, okay? <laughs> uh, I do believe Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is still real and I do believe it is coming this year. I think it will be announced in this direct and it'll probably be pretty similar to what those rumors last year said. So if you're interested, go check out the whole rumor discussion video we did last year. We talked about it for like an hour and a half, so it was pretty cool. Along with that, we're going to get some Metroid news. I know it's not been long since Dread, but 
I think it's time that we see Metroid Prime Trilogy. <laughs> I've been predicting this game, I believe, for the past two years now. Past two uh, yearly prediction videos. It's been there. Never shown up, though. People still keep saying it's a thing, though. Now, apparently, it's just a Metroid Prime remake, like the first game. I still think it's going to be a trilogy. Maybe I'm insane. I probably am. But that's what I think it's going to be. And after it, we're going to get our very first actual Metroid Prime 4 teaser. This game has been in development since 2018 now, and I think it's time we see our first glimpse, and then we might see more of it later this year, who knows. Along with that, I believe Fire Emblem is going to get a new installment in the form of Fire Emblem Echoes of the Holy Wars of Genealogy, or something along those lines. I don't know, I came up with a name at E3 last year of what I thought it would be. Just put that there, I guess, but I didn't take the time to look it up. I think it's gonna be Genealogy of the Holy War, a remake of that on the Echoes naming brand, and it's going to be really exciting. Splatoon 3 will also make an appearance in this Direct in a big way. They're going to reveal a new mode, and I think that mode could be a Battle Royale. I don't know. I, I just have a feeling, maybe. It's either going to be a Battle Royale or a new player versus AI game like Salmon Run, except you can't use the Salmon now, so I'm predicting it's going to be like a bear hunt where you hunt bears instead because you know the whole mammal thing with the single player that's my bold prediction there and speaking of bold predictions i also wanted to make just one really big bold prediction about something i don't think anyone's been talking about but it just really seems like a matter of time before it happens which is a wii sports revival because why would Nintendo not? I don't know why they wouldn't use that brand. It was so popular with the Wii. The amount of people that own the Switch now, you got a pretty big casual market in there. Even the, like the hardcore gamers, they love Wii Sports. I, I love Wii Sports. So I think it's just like a, a done deal. Uh, just like matter of time when is it going to happen if nintendo actually capitalizes on it but yeah i i think maybe it'll come back as me sports i saw someone mention that somewhere i did not write it down so i could credit them but that's that's perfect like i didn't even think about it me sports just replaced the Wii with the me it's, it's yeah it's great uh but then i kind of changed my mind because of a rumor we love rumors around here don't we we love when uh, rumors pop up and we just have to believe them nowadays because most of the time, a lot of them are true. At least the ones that I get, like the, a lot of the time, they just end up being true nowadays. So Emily Rogers, which is one of the most trusted industry people who reports on rumors like this that I know, said something along the lines of there's going to be a new casual game hitting the Switch this year that's going to get a bit of an interesting reaction from people. People might, might not be excited about it. They might not like it. And I'm trying to think of what that would be. I think it might be Me Music. Yeah, that's right. A sequel to We Music, the uh, very uncritically acclaimed We Music. I actually have some great memories of We Music, so I'd be all down for a Me Music. I don't know why. I just got the feeling. I think it's it might happen. So I'm scratching the We Sports prediction, which actually makes sense, and I'm putting me music and finally that leads us to the final prediction of this direct which is that we are going to get a mention of breath of the wild 2. no new gameplay just a mention it is still on track for this year it is going to come out holiday this year we will get a release date but that's it and then we'll be told look forward to more soon and then they're gonna show this, the Zelda Twilight Princess and Wind Waker collection. I don't know why this didn't come out last year. It feels like it really should have because you know, the anniversary and everything, and it would have been super easy to do. These games are already put together on the Wii U. You just gotta like change some control things. So and like, instead of this button on the gamepad, it's this button on the switch, you know, but like it really shouldn't be that much work. I don't think, I mean, I don't port games for a living. I don't know how hard it is, but it can't be that hard, right? Next, in February, we're actually going to get another presentation from Pokemon, because Pokemon just really likes to do these early in the year presentations as well. And even though Arceus just came out, I do think they have a few more tricks up their sleeve for this year. I think this Pokemon Presents will be lacking in news on the next gen Pokemon, but we will get Detective Pikachu back. <laughs> He's gonna come back, finally. Because if you don't remember, a few years ago, Detective Pikachu 2 was announced, and we've heard nothing since. They showed it in a PowerPoint presentation and they left and we haven't heard anything since. I predicted it would show up last year. I didn't. So I'm just going to do it again this year. Maybe I'll be right. Along with that, we'll get some mobile games updates on Unite Masters, stuff like that. I don't know. I don't pay too much attention to all the other side stuff Pokemon does. But yeah, no new gen news yet, but 
hold your horses because soon. And that will bring us to the lovely month of March where we're going to get some great game releases with both Triangle Strategy and Kirby in the Forgotten Land as was confirmed just a little while ago in a second trailer. It looked really good. I'm excited about that game. It looks so good. So yeah, March is going to be a really heavy hitter. Triangle Strategy is going to be a big sleeper hit, just like Octopath. It's going to be an amazing game. Tremendous soundtrack, just like uh, Octopath had. At least I hope. That's my... That is my number one hope. I love the Octopath uh, soundtrack. And Kirby is going to be huge. Everybody's going to love it. They're going to say 3D Kirby is the future. Gods be Nintendo, you've done us a great service. Anyway, on to April. This is where we're going to get Advanced Wars Reboot Camp, which was kicked out of last year to, uh, you know, polish things up, get it ready. I think April is going to be its month. I'm hoping this game does good. I've heard like nothing about it since E3 last year, but it is exciting to see Advanced Wars make a comeback, especially when it looked like Fire Emblem just kind of killed it there for a bit. So happy for that. May will bring us to the release of the Zelda collection of Twilight Princess and the Wind Waker, and it's just gonna be basically ports of the Wii U version, so people are gonna be happy because those are two really good games just kind of smushed together for a decent price. So this will also bring us the release of Me Music, and it will see universal critical acclaim. Fans will be living their dreams. It's going to be amazing. And that's May. On to June, where we're going to see another E3 Nintendo Direct. It was recently confirmed that E3 is going to be going all digital again this year. There's going to be no in-person event due to complications from the pandemic, but it's still going to be a place where we get a Nintendo direct and nintendo is still going to treat it as a pretty big deal hey everybody it's future xeno from the future <laughs> yet again because uh i've just been taking too long to make this video i guess a lot of news has been coming out a lot of things happening which actually isn't true because january has been kind of light on news but there's been news that matters to this predictions video which is that maybe we won't be getting an online e3 it might be that e3 is just canceled altogether this year which i don't think would affect nintendo having a direct in the month of june i think that will still happen but it does bring into question when it will happen in that month since it's usually the second week of June that E3 happens in uh, But if E3 is not there, what's the point in going by those guidelines? You can wait till the end of June or you can drop it the very first day of June I don't know. That's kind of one of the big things that would change if E3 isn't here this year The secondary side effect of that might be though that Nintendo doesn't treat this as as big of a deal as I thought they would and a lot of the stuff that I'm about to say might not happen in as grand of a scale as it was going to before. There might not be Treehouse Live, I don't know. I'm just thinking about if E3 doesn't happen this year, if we're just getting a Nintendo Direct in June, what will that look like? I just thought I'd bring that to your attention. Nothing's been confirmed. This is just a rumor at this point, but a rumor coming from some pretty reliable sources. So uh, there you go. Uh, take it away again, my man, past Xeno. This is going to be telling as to why that February Direct was so stuffed with stuff. Well, first of all, Nintendo just has a lot going on this year. But second of all, Breath of the Wild Wild 2 is going to take center stage at this E3 presentation. Just like its predecessor, it is basically going to steal the show and get all the attention from Nintendo and uh, the media too. They're going to eat it up. It's going to be great. Yeah, it's basically going to be a Breath of the Wild 2 showcase. There might be a few other games there. I believe that we're going to get a new announcement of the Donkey Kong 2D platformer that was rumored last year. I think that will be our only new announcement there. Uh, Bayonetta 3 will show up, Xenoblade 3 will show up, and maybe Splatoon 3 will show up. You're not going to have time for like much other stuff. It's not It's not going to be on the level of 2016 where Breath of the Wild was like the only thing there, but it's going to be kind of like Smash Ultimate in 2018, I guess, where most of that direct was dedicated to Smash and most of their time on Treehouse and all that was as well. That's what I see happening. But yeah, I do want to circle back to Donkey Kong for a minute because I did say, yeah, I think it's going to be a 2D platformer based off the rumors last year. People said it could be 3D, it could be 2D, but it's going to be made by Nintendo EPD, the people that made Super Mario Odyssey, and it's going to be okay. It's it's going to be like the retro platformers really, except from Nintendo EPD, so their own code of style to it. It's not going to be Jungle Beat like I said last year. I think it's going to be just like a regular 2D platformer. And we're going to be pretty disappointed because while it's going to be good, it could have been 3D. Also at E3, Mario plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope will show up again at the Ubisoft conference and we will get a release date of September this year. And it's going to look just like really, really good. Ubisoft Milan just doing like a bang up job on it. That's my prediction. Also, I forgot to put this in before the direct and I just forgot to record it in general the first time around, but there's gonna be a Pokemon Presents in June as well. 
this Pokemon Presents will give us two big pieces of news. First is that the next generation of Pokemon is on the way, but not this year. It is coming next year. They are just going to announce it here to say, hey, next year, next generation, big stuff is happening. We're not just going to be doing Legends Pokemon games from now on. We're going to be doing the mainline stuff with new regions as well. But never fear, Pokemon Company would never miss a holiday without putting out some kind of new Pokemon title. And I believe that title might be a new entry in the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon series. I don't have a whole lot to say about what it would be like since I'm not a huge Mystery Dungeon fan myself, but we did get the remake of Rescue Rangers. That's the one it was, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, editing me, but we got that remake. I think that was 2020, and now it's been two years since then. I think that that team has been working on a brand new one once the series was rebooted with this remake on the Switch. It's going to be the same art style and everything, but it's going to be a new game. Beyond that, just sitting here, I'm thinking about it and maybe a new Pokémon could be possible. I feel like I heard somebody say that, like Pokémon Company is interested in making a sequel to Pokémon Tournament, so let's put that on there too. I'm gonna say that Pokémon won't come out until early next year in 2023, but uh, yeah, there you go. Now there's three big things that happened at this Pokemon Presents. That's pretty cool. This month in game releases, we will see the Metroid Prime Trilogy come to Switch, and uh, we will also see Detective Pikachu. I doubt it's gonna happen, but I'm gonna put it here anyway. So if it does, I'm a psychic. Next up is July, and this is going to be the month of Splatoon 3's release, just as the original came out in July 2017. Splatoon 3 is going to release pretty light on content, as the other two games did, but it's going to be built up over the years with that rollout of all the new gear and everything that just keeps you coming back. It's, it's going to be pretty fun anyway, so I'm really excited about that game and expect videos. August, I have what might be considered a bit of a bold one with Xenoblade Chronicles 3 releasing. So a lot of people might be saying, oh, Xenoblade is more of a holiday game. It's going to be at the the end of the year they need time to work on that but based on the rumors last year i'm putting way too much stock into them i know but i think it's probably almost done i think this game is kind of just waiting for its time now i've heard some stuff that it, it could be delayed there's rumors going around about that if that happens i feel like it, it might be to coincide with like a new switch model next year i don't know i'm so sick of talking about a new switch model though because i've lost all hope in the pro i think at this point we're probably just going to get like a game boy to game boy color transition where it's it's like an they call it a new system but it's basically the old system with just like a, a few new bells and whistles i think that's what's going to happen next generation switch and it's just going to be like everything crosses over but yeah maybe that's why xenoblade would be delayed but otherwise i don't see it being delayed unless the current switch just can't run it and going into september we're going to find mario plus rapid sparks of hope coming out which is going to be a fantastic new entry into that series and uh, we're also going to find a nintendo direct as i said the nintendo directs are all going to happen at the exact same time really exact same months and it's going to be unprecedented because nintendo never has patterns but apparently now they do and everyone's going to freak out but uh i guess the september direct always has been a pattern the february not so much but like september yeah it, it has been a pattern. This September Direct is a bit hard to pin down because these Directs usually reveal games that are coming next year. So it usually helps to set up what the next year, beginning of the year is gonna look like. And he here's what I'm thinking. So first of all, Breath of the Wild, Bayo, Donkey Kong, those are gonna be shown off because those are the big games that have yet to come out this year that they need to advertise more. But then, for next year, what are they going to show off? What's going to be that hook title to uh, lead us into the next year? There's been rumors about Mario Kart going around lately. I don't understand exactly why. Like, they're coming from an analyst predicting this. They're just kind of predicting it. There's, like, no real concrete information there as far as I can tell. So I don't think that's going to be the hook. I think a new Mario Kart game is still a little wise, a while off. There's the possibility of a Super Mario Odyssey sequel. I've heard people say maybe Nintendo EPD could be working on both a Donkey Kong game and a Super Mario Odyssey sequel. I kind of don't see that happening yet either. Like maybe they are still working on both at the same time, but it's not something that's going to be like the hook for the beginning of next year. So then I turn to, well, who, el who else could it be? Who else has stuff that could be ready? And I think of next level games because it's been a while since Luigi's Mansion. So maybe they could be making a Strikers or a Punch-Out or like something new. I don't know. It could just be another Luigi's Mansion, but I don't quite, because those take a while to make. It took them a while to make three. Or I think of Grezzo, which we also haven't heard from in a while. I mean, they made Metopia last year. I'm not sure how much of their time went into that. And they made Link's Awakening in 2019. So... 
I could see a new 2D Zelda from them being sometime soon. I've been saying it for years now. They need to be given the right to just make a new 2D Zelda game. They would do great. Maybe that's the hook. I can't really decide on what it'll be. I do firmly believe though that in a September Direct, we will get a hint of a game coming out next year. I don't have to say exactly what game it's gonna be because we're not predicting 2023 yet. So there you go. <laughs> that's my excuse. 2023 in general, is just such an interesting anomaly right now because if I'm trying to predict 2022, so many of these games could just fall into 2023. Uh, just like, I don't know. It's, it's just a matter of what they actually come through on. Because like Breath of the Wild 2 could still be delayed to next year. We don't know that for sure. I just don't think it will be. But yeah, that's September and that moves us on to October, which is going to be Bayonetta 3's release. It's been a long time in the making, fans of Bayonetta. I am so happy for you. There you go. Not a Bayonetta fan, but happy for the fans. That's amazing. Well done, Kamiya. You did it. November is going to be the launch of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild sequel. I think it has to hit this year. As I said earlier, I don't see it not hitting this year. What the heck could they be doing <laughs> that delays it to next year? Yes, the pandemic happened, but how much did it really hurt their development? I don't know. I just, I, I kind of just won it this year at this point. I think that might be part of it too. Like I'm, I'm done waiting. So <laughs> if it does fall out of this year, that'll be a little depressing, but I don't know. We'll see. I don't think it will. And November will also mark the release of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon for the Nintendo Switch, a brand new entry as we discussed earlier. And that's exciting for the fans. Again, not a big Mystery Dungeon fan, but that's exciting. December, our final frontier for these predictions. And as I'm about to predict it, I'm starting to get second thoughts because I was listening to what I just said at the September Direct where I said there's going to have to be a hook game for the beginning of next year. My original prediction was that Donkey Kong would come out in December because everybody loves Donkey Kong December, but I'm kind of doubting it now. Like a Tropical Freeze, it could be the exact same situation as that game because that game was going to come out in December 2013, but it was delayed to February 2014. So I'm kind of thinking now, what if Donkey Kong is our early next year hook? that we see in that direct. I'm switching my predictions. That's that's what it's gonna be actually. <laughs> Donkey Kong is no longer here. We just have Donkey Kong at the beginning of next year. So actually just erase him from the entirety of this video. He was never here. You never heard the name I'm sorry, but he's, he's not here until 2023. On the bright side though, I do have another prediction for December, which is that Nintendo will return to the game awards. I don't even know why I try anymore. <laughs> I've been burned so many times by Nintendo's absence at the Game Awards, but I just feel like this is the perfect venue to premiere Metroid Prime 4. I think at the end of this year, it is going to get a actual trailer, like substance trailer. I said at the beginning of this year, it's going to get a teaser. I think this is when we get the substance and the Game Awards just seems like the perfect place to do it. The perfect timing. I don't know. Nintendo doesn't seem to like the awards show anymore, but it just seems like a perfect fit to me. So that is the prediction. And with that, my friends, those are my predictions for Nintendo's 2022. But what do you think? Am I wrong? Am I right? Am I semi-wrong? Am I semi-right? I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments down below. Let me know what your predictions are for the year, how you agree with me, disagree with me. Just be polite about it, you know, but like, I want to hear you guys' predictions. I, I just, I love hearing predictions. That's why I do these videos because I like watching prediction videos. So I'm like, I'm going to make a prediction video and then other people might like watching it. It's also just fun to be right sometimes. You know, most of the time you're wrong but sometimes you're right and speaking of which we still have to go over my predictions from last year so let's just do a quick rundown of that see how wrong and right I was So, my predictions for Nintendo in 2021. I said there was going to be a Zelda Direct in mid-February and Breath of the Wild 2 or not it was going to be a big year for Zelda I don't think that happened I also said I think Breath of the Wild 2 will hit this year that's a big no. I said there would be two waves of Age of Calamity DLC. I did get that one, that's right. I said that there would be a Pokemon Presents Direct in late February for the anniversary, and that they would reveal Detective Pikachu 2, Pokemon Sleep, and Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remakes. Two out of three ain't bad. In March, I predicted an early surprise trailer would be dropped for Tamodachi Life. That did not happen. And I predicted that Monster Hunter would be announced as a new Smash Bros character. 
that's also a no. In Nintendo's E3 Direct, I predicted that Super Mario Party 2 would be announced. I'm gonna give myself a point for that. I think that that was pretty right. I mean, Mario Party Superstars is kinda Super Mario Party 2. I predicted a new Monolith Soft game would be revealed for next year. That did not happen. I said Crash Bandicoot would come to Super Smash Bros. as the next DLC fighter. It was Kazuya instead. But I did say some Splatoon news related to the 2020 Sam and his SOS art would come out at the E3 Direct. Didn't happen at the E3 Direct, but we did get a Splatoon 3 announcement in the February Direct, so I'm gonna give myself a point for that as well. Bayonetta 3 reveal. Development is progressing. And I did hit the money on this one. A new 2D Metroid game by Samus Returns developer, Mercury Steam. I didn't quite say Dread, but it is a new 2D Metroid game, and it is by Mercury Steam. That is a win. Breath of the Wild 2 gameplay reveal and just total blowout. Unfortunately not. In July, I said there would be a Kirby spinoff announced. A little too early and a little less cool. In September, I said we would have a Nintendo Direct. Yes. I said Pikmin 4 would be announced. Pikmin 4 doesn't exist. I said the final Smash character would be Waluigi. I still think he kind of deserved it. And I said that Age of Calamity's second DLC pack would come out and tie into Breath of the Wild uh, with its story. Man, I, I was so hopeful last year. I said Breath of the Wild 2 would release in November. Nope. And I said the Game Awards would give us a Metroid Prime 4 tease. Why do I keep predicting the same thing, hoping for different results? Well, there you have it, guys. You win some, you lose some. But as I've said many times before, overall, predictions, they're just for fun. Is it a crime to imagine a perfect world where we get a new Mario, Zelda, Xenoblade, <laughs> Mario Kart, Luigi's Mansion, Fire Emblem, Punch-Out, all in the same year? I don't think so. But yeah, as I said earlier, guys, make sure you drop your predictions in the comments down below. I would love to read them. Also, while you're down there, you could hit the like button, you could subscribe to the channel, you could help me out a whole lot by doing those things. And, uh... Just thanks for stopping by. Thanks for hanging out with me, talking about Nintendo 2022 predictions. Prediction videos are just fun. I like them. And uh, yeah, I hope you all have a wonderful 2022. I'm very optimistic about this year and I can't wait to see just what it holds. Thanks again, guys, for stopping by. As one last reminder, you can follow me on Twitter, join the Discord server, and uh, check out the streams with the link in the description below. All of those things are down there. And uh, just have yourselves a wonderful day and a wonderful year. And I will see you soon with more new videos. Bye-bye.